I'm just not getting anywhere. Spanish Squirrel here with another fantastic technique. If you're tired of not getting anywhere, then SRT may be the solution for you. Okay guys, now down to some serious business, okay? So this is a basics needed for SRT, SRS, however you wanna call it, and the basics to ascending slash moving. It's just a quick little easy tutorial for those that are interested into getting into the SRT world. So yeah, let's get right down to it. So the basics needed are gonna be your hitch base system, all right? This is the absolute basics. You can go to mechanicals and that's a whole different story, but for the absolute basics, hitch cord, Prusik, Micro pulley, I'm using a hitch climber eccentric on mine. And you need a rope wrench with a tether. Okay, so the reason for the tether and the wrench, if you went up on a, on a hitch by itself, it's basically no problem. The problem comes when you actually have to descend or work laterally in the tree. It is said that the hitch may burn up on long descents a lot easier, or if you were to release the hitch on a descent, it's gonna lock up, bind, whatever, right? So now you have to ascend, break the hitch loose, come down. What the wrench does is once it engages, so if I drop the weight and I start to descend, it's gonna create this S bend into it. So the S there is, uh, it's gonna add a little bit of friction to the system, allowing your hitch to release easier and allowing you to work along the tree laterally much easier as well. So that's the basics for your primary climbing system. Now, if you do if you are just getting used to it and you want to single up, double down, amazing, it's a, it's a very good way to do things until you get the hang of it. And then re as repetition, you'll get a lot better at it and you'll find different techniques that work for you, right? Because everybody has their own climbing style, their own sauce. So I would recommend bringing up an additional carabiner if you plan to single up, double down, because you just flip the wrench head back onto the, onto the eye splice or take it off and switch over in the, in, once you're in your final timing point. But, so that's your primary climbing system. Now, uh, to go along with it, you do need at least, at minimum, one foot ascender, okay? Foot ascender, or ascending on an SRT system on its own, it's a one-to-one. -one. You don't have that two-to-one advantage like you would on a, on a moving rope system. So instead of pulling half your weight, SRT, if you're trying to hip thrust, you're pulling full body weight, and you might, you might be doing some damage, okay? So the foot ascender creates a step, right? The cam gives you a step feel, like you're stepping on the rope, hence rope walking technique. So now, foot ascender, you're doing a lot of pumping with one foot. You're pumping, you're pumping, you're pumping. And if this is a 70 foot climb to your final tie-in, if you're gonna switch over, you're, you're gonna have a massive thigh on one side. So if you incorporate a knee ascender, now you're using both of your legs, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Chest harness, if you don't care for a chest harness, you can throw your lanyard over the shoulder, reclip it to that mini carabiner over there and it'll slack ten your system. This chest harness is not intended for life support. This is just to slack tend. And this is just my drip. You might be wondering why I have all that extra stuff on there. So, this, 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 that, the other, your basics, right? Make sense? Along with your PPE, all right, helmet, lenses, all that good stuff, and your harness, lanyard, you don't have to get a super bougie harness. One thing that I grew up, uh, that I was always told was the equipment doesn't make the climber, the climber makes the equipment, right? So learn your basics, and if you ever wanna get so fancy and you get into the world of, man, this gear's awesome, it's shiny, then venture off and play with it. That's kind of how I view things, right? But this is the basics there. Now, 
one thing I forgot to mention that's absolutely critical is throw line, okay? Throw line is key in this climbing technique, climbing style, because if you can't get a throw ball up there, you're not gonna be able to anchor how you want to. Now, in this scenario, we have two anchors that I've done, is a base anchor and canopy anchor. One, you have to isolate, the other you do not, and we're gonna get right to it. So simple base anchors, you just need your rope. You may see online or on social media posts that there are things like a snake anchor, a separate rope with a thimble for base anchors, or different ways to use a carabiner, mantra hitch locks, you got porter wraps on it, you can use mechanical descenders. Again, if you're just after the basics, this will work, okay? So, what we've got here is a running bowline and the Yosemite tie-off or lock-off. So, as we climb, our system loads, unloads, loads, and unloads because we're jumping around, we're moving through the, we're moving through the crown, going through redirects and things like that. So the Yosemite is going to prevent that bowling from locking, uh, backing out. And then above that, we have an Alpine butterfly. Alpine butterfly is for rescue purposes. If you want to check that out, we have a couple different videos on how to rescue someone from the ground. If all the factors are perfect, right? And it's not a perfect world. So, but back to it. Now we have a separate line here, so it is important to train your crew members that, hey, this is my climbing system. Don't touch, don't untie, don't do nothing. Keep your distance until we're good to go, okay? So it's important that you train your crew members on what's going on and just don't shoot a line and automatically assume that they may know what you're doing because sometimes they won't. Now, with base anchors, you don't really have to isolate. Isolating a stem up top, because you just have to shoot it over the desired branch union, clean it down to the ground, and lock it off like this right here. And the way that a base anchor loads the crown, the canopy, the branch union, it is said that it doubles at the branch union. So if you're seeing 100 pounds here, 100 pounds on this back leg, then the branch union it may be seeing 200. That'd be if it was a friction free setting, right? Let's say if I was climbing off of a pulley up top through a base anchor, then it's doubled and parallel. The ropes are parallel, right? Theory is if you spread open your angles, it's not doubling, all right? That's the theory behind it. I'm not an expert, right? I just take and relay the info that I'm given and adapt it to my climbing, and I'm just always aware of what is going on. So with base anchors, just be a little bit more cautious until you get the full details of the know-how, okay? So this is a super basic base anchor. Canopy anchors can be made non-retrievable and retrievable. Now, over here I have a Alpine butterfly with a ring on, on the inside of it, on the inside of the loop. Now, why would I do that, right? If I did an Alpine butterfly and rope, no ring, to choke off up top, so I'll bring it down so you can see right there, okay? So if my rope was running through the loop here, upon retrieval, I've got all that friction, the rope might start to glaze, burn, damage it, and then might render that section useless, and now you have to cut off that section, and that's not good. So the ring here is to avoid that right there, that rope on rope. There are limitations to this type of canopy anchor, okay? It's super basic, it's easy. I would only probably jump through one redirect and be able to retrieve fairly okay, okay? Because upon retrieval, if you've got one redirect, you're, you're gonna start experiencing that friction right there. Now, if this was on rope, it'd be even worse. So, and knowing how to lock it off would be important. Now, that is your, it's a retrievable. You can also do one with a running bowline and a Yosemite tie-off, non-retrievable, if you know you're gonna single up, double down. So now that I've talked about the super basics on Canopy anchor, base anchor, um, please do some more research, right? Be safe, climb safe. Now comes a part of actually ascending the tree, which right here, I've got my pre-tied system already. Now, one thing you wanna do on the ground and always is load the hitch without the head on to ensure that that hitch will hold you and that the rope wrench isn't what's gonna hold you there. So sit into, tend and tend, sit, it's holding me, so now I can engage my rope wrench in there. 
and now we're good. Before we go up, it's important to note that when you're ready to come down or descend with all your, from the work you're doing, just collapse the hitch. Don't collapse the rope wrench head and come down like this, okay? That's a big no-no. So it's just hitch, your body weight will engage the rest, and it descends the hitch for you. So as we talked about the ascenders and them being used, kind of a brief little, you know, I, I weigh about 155 maybe, and if I tried hip thrusting and holding my weight as I tend slack, ooh, them shoulders are burning. I'll be really gassed out, really fatigued, and the work hasn't even started, okay? So that's why we use the ascenders, okay? So I'm gonna clip my chest in, tend the slack a little bit. And my foot ascender is usually the one that goes on first. So here I'm using a Camp Turbo Evo, lock or non-lock, however you shall choose to do it. Step up, engage the hitch, and then as we float here and just spin a little bit, we're gonna engage, open the cam, and that's locked, all right? Easy as that. Now, this is one really important thing. You're in a work setting. We've got a lot of work to do. We're gonna crown, uh, do some crown reduction, crown clean, whatever it is. It's not a race up the tree, okay? It's not a competition. Competitions are a whole different setting. They're a whole different thing on their own. This is work. We may have three, four, five trees to trim that day and prune. So, easy steps. Don't focus on taking Whew, whew, whew. huge steps. At least I don't. This is the way that I find it works for me best so that I'm not gassing myself out on an ascent, okay? So you stand up, your hands are gonna hold you vertical up the rope. You are gonna have a tendency to go backwards, which is fine, all right, it's natural. You gotta hold yourself up, knee up, foot. Knee up and foot. And just work on your movements, work on the key of going up and down, up and down, and the rest comes natural, right? So we're gonna go up, we're gonna go up. And if you wanted to, you could take a break, sit down, enjoy the view, right? You might be working out by the mountains. Stop, take a quick minute. Let's go again. One, two, one, two, baby stepping it. And if a limb comes up and against your way, just give it a quick push, spin yourself, face the limb, make sure that your hardware doesn't come into serious contact with it. All right, so this is actually a good example right here of a redirect. All right, so there's a branch union right here. I've jumped over this way instead of the way I ascended. This is a natural redirect. I don't have to worry about going up and retrieving hardware. I don't have to worry about making it retrievable. But if you are so inclined to, you can use a sling, right? This is just a webbing loop and a regular triple action, auto locking, 23, 24KN carabiner right here. And you can utilize this to make a redirect. Downside is not gonna be retrievable. But if you wanted to learn more about redirects, we do have a plethora, right? Plethora of videos. And check out the rest of them on the YouTube channel, right? So. Here, what I've done is I'm just gonna flake a little bit of tail that I know I'm gonna use, just like this. Now, here's the awesome thing about SRT or SRS, which stands for Stationary Rope System. I can drop down through two, three, four redirects. My friction should always stay the same. It shouldn't fluctuate because my rope is touching the limb, and that's because my friction is right here. Right? If I'm on a moving rope system or traditional double rope, if I drop through a redirect, my rope is running up and down with me as I climb. So if that rope is rubbing on the tree, I'm gonna have that friction right there of it going up, over, and now then rubbing on this limb. I'm fighting that friction unless you create some kind of redirect with tools, All right? So that's the cool thing, because me as a climber on a stationary rope system, I can move up, or I can move back, I can move down, I'm sorry. Eh. Move down, or I can move back up. So that's a very big positive to this, especially if you're, if you're pruning out some large spread, spread, spread crown, then yeah, oh yeah, it makes a difference. All right, so we dropped through our redirect at this point. And like I said, I'm technically redirected over, and if I would push down against this limb, it wouldn't really matter. 
The only thing you'd have to watch is your rope angle, right? As we all know, don't exceed a 45 because it can put us in some danger, swinging and everything, not good. So limb walking is something that I would say you're gonna have to get used to, big time. Okay, so we're used to having this two to one mechanical advantage on, on walking back. When we walk back on this, we run into the same thing where we pull up, hold, 10. It's not as hard as hip thrusting, but it has it definitely is a learning curve or just something to get used to because going out is the exact same thing. So I can come out, come out, come out, right? Now, limb walking back from a super far limb, if you don't have the structure like you do on this cherry, it's gonna be hard because we gotta have balance. Ooh, ooh, right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Pull up, hold. 10, okay? And now you gotta keep holding to pull, walk back, hold yourself, 10 the slack again. Repeat the process till you get back to where you started and you know you're gonna be safe. Now, you can create retrievable mechanical advantage to help you in this instance, but something that I picked up was if I can find a redirect I'd rather redirect on top of the limb rather than create a mechanical advantage. That's just less hard we have to deal with. But in the event that I cannot, I absolutely can't find a suitable redirect to keep me in position out here, then I may opt out to use something like a scam or a retrievable mechanical advantage type of system. But again, check those other videos out. Thanks. But here we go, back in, back in, 10 slack, 10 slack, and we're back to point here. Now, I can come down, and because this is in a canopy anchor, I could have gone through four redirects. My rope should still pull out fairly easily. Now mind how many, or mind the branch union, right, on your redirects. If you go through a branch union that's got included bark, or if it's very, very tight, right, like on some linden trees, just drop through it, then you may have some problems, okay? Keep that in mind. Other than that, you're good to come down. All right, so as I'm coming down, if I let go of the hitch, it's gonna hold me. And now, remember, because we were talking about that added friction, uh, thanks to the rope wrench here, I don't have to fight to break that loose, I can just all the way to the ground, or as everybody likes to, we can just do a quick kickoff and down, right? Gives a little bit of that oomph. Best part's always coming down, especially after a super hard day of climbing. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Don't go anywhere just yet. It is recommended that you at least have a double braid rope for the equipment needed. Almost forgot that part, right? That's pretty important too. At least a double braid rope, 24 strand or higher count. But that is the absolute basics to SRT, SRS climbing. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully it helps you out for those that are up and coming and want to get into the SRT world. Visit us at bartleman.com. Feel free to check out the rest of the YouTube channel for those redirect videos if you want to.